Okay, so I'm just going to bring you to the report, the latest report. So uh, it's put out on the 25th of March 2017, and uh, it's done by Pierre Fete, uh, who uh, I think you can see that, yeah, it's highlighted there in the bottom right hand corner, just uh, where the mouse is. Uh, he's done a report in French and um, it's covering the latest details that we have from the nuclear uh, reactor in Holden, Norway. And of course, uh, there was uh, a lot of speculation. Is it, is it having a meltdown uh, and all this sort of thing? It's uh, flying around the internet. Um, I've done big reports on it, so where I was talking about the fuel rod that was removed, that was emitting iodine, the reactor itself that was producing hydrogen, um, and so we're looking at uh, these issues. Now, I've uh, basically done a story um, on this, a blog if you like, uh, which I've translated Pierre's article, and I've put it onto European News Weekly uh, initially, I'll be putting it onto nuclear-news.net uh, tomorrow, which has a much wider uh, sort of uh, readership. And um, I'm just going to bring you, this is uh, Norway, we've got Sweden, Finland, we've got Denmark just down here, Germany, uh, we've got Lithuania, Li uh, Latvia, uh, all around this uh, area here. Uh, the UK is not too far away, uh, Ireland's just a little bit further away. Uh, France is 1,200 kilometres from Holden. Now, uh, the releases that we've seen from uh, Holden over the past uh, few months, uh, and basically the only ones I've been able to find are in October, as stated by the NRPA, and I've also done an article um, with evidence showing that there was very likely a release uh, in the 17th, 19th and 20th of February uh, last month, uh, which where the Eurodep radiation monitoring network was switched off, the data has been switched off in Sweden for uh, those three days, and one of those days uh, the uh, emissions must have come back and hit Norway all along the coast, on the west coast and in Oslo, uh, only for a few hours that one, uh, but it was there was a switch off there as well. So uh, I've had no sort of uh, confirmation from sources as to what happened around that time. Uh, the wind was blowing south and then it started moving north and sort of east. So it was heading further into a larger area of Sweden uh, and obviously some, at some point it came back and then went back up. Now that might have just been one release um, and the data was taken off as this cloud wandered around Sweden. Also Denmark has, uh, has releases um, uh, which uh, well, it obviously had switch offs basically around there. Now I'm going to be, I'm going to try and do a very short video here just to update everyone. Now, <clears throat> so if I can scroll down, it's not scrolling down. Why isn't it scrolling down? Oh, here we are. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of quotes uh, from Pierre Ferre. Okay, so I've actually spelt uh, Ferre wrong. That should be Fete. I'll make that adjustment soon. Anyway. Um, the three quotes that I picked up from this article, this extensive article, is done, um, and I've linked to that on the European News website, so you can go and check out the technical details and also confirm what he said uh, if you want to do the French conversion yourself. Uh, but anyway, the three, article, uh, three quotes that I've got from him are, this Nuclear Safety Authority, the NRPA, the New Norwegian Radiological Protection Association, reported only 0.02% of the radioactive releases. And that was because that was all they were given by the IFE. Um, and uh, it was just to do with iodine, uh, radioactive iodine, from that particular October release. Now, <clears throat> there is a, a load of others, basically. There's noble gases, there's other isotopes, um, and uh, a report from Krirad said that there was a, a very large amount of other gases and uh, noble gases, they call them, um, and uh, other isotopes that were released. Um, but uh, the, uh, well, anyway, that's, I'll just leave that for now. Uh, on the French side, uh, I also contacted, he said, the IRSN, they're a French uh, radiological uh, inst uh, um, sort of uh, institute, if you like, um, and they, he contacted them on the same day, uh, but this one has rem remained silent for now, he said. As for the ASN, uh, another uh, French uh, uh, sort of uh, nuclear group, uh, they referred him to the press release of the NRPA 
and the IFA, IFE. Now the IFE are the ones that own the actual uh, reactor. So they weren't giving out any information to him. Uh, they would only give the information to the NRPA. Now the NRPA did get some more information and they gave that to CREAD, um, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, so no wonder the rumors of meltdown in Holden bloom in several websites. The IFE and the NRPA, while remaining opaque, uh, basically not uh, as clear as they could be on this incident, themselves caused legitimate questions that quickly turn into rumours. At present, these two organisations are obliged to make communiques to counter the rumours they helped to form. Now, in fairness to the NRPA, they did actually uh, do uh, some uh, information uh, to uh, CREAD. Okay, and CREAD basically, and they managed to get that information. They asked the IFE and uh, crew had have made uh, a report on this, uh, giving uh, the amounts of uh, uh, sort of other radioactive gases, uh, noble gases and I I isotopes um, as best they can, although it's not a full uh, list of all the isotopes as far as we're aware. Now, he also says that the NRP told Krirad that it asked the IFE to correct the design defect in the Holden reactor. There is a design defect, right? Otherwise, the restart permit would not be given. Now, the design defect has to do with sensors. Uh, so the gamma from the iodine managed to cause problems with the neutron detector. Now, that the neutron detector should just detect neutrons and should not be affected by gamma rays you know, inside a nuclear reactor. Otherwise, it's, it's a, there's a fundamental problem there. Um, so, uh, obviously, the problem with the rods that got taken out, we don't know what's happening there. Uh, but we'll go through that. So he, he then goes on, uh, he makes some uh, sort of in, you know, starter inch incident, uh, makes the connection with Fukushima. And um, <clears throat> so basically he did a summary, which I'm just going to go through the summary and I'll link to the whole article so you can read through it in your own pace. Uh, it's in French, it's in uh, English. Um, uh, maybe at some point we'll get that into Norwegian as well. So one of the oldest reactors in the world is still in operation. That's his first paragraph. He's done some paragraphs basically uh, to that to explain you know, how old it is, 1959. Uh, he talks about the partners of the Holden reactor project from Russia, from, uh, from, uh, was it from uh, Germany, Sweden, Denmark, um, from Korea, from America, from the UK. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's truly, it's a huge amount and he lists all the uh, different uh, groups that are involved with it um, and who, who do their research with this particular reactor. Now <clears throat> he talks about the incident of 24th of October 2016. We link to reports from the NRPA um, who are doing a, a sort of a, an in-depth study for the last two years on this reactor um, and there was issues with that but I think we covered some of those in the last video and in the comment sections in the last video, which was uh, worth uh, uh, basically having a read of. There's pro-nuclear and uh, uh, sort of viewpoints about uh, the information being wrong. But since then, we've got uh, more information from CREAD, from the NRPA, um, to prove what we were saying about the license being uh, revoked, um, which was something that the uh, sort of uh, nuclear engineers were uh, claiming. Anyway, so Pierre goes on to say, uh, talk about the experimentation of the new fuels as well. Um, so he was saying, well, did the new fuels, were they, is that the problem with the fuel rods? Did they try some new fuels, some thorium uh, rods uh, or pellets inside that reactor and they, it went wrong? Um, he was also talking about what was the nature of the radioactive clouds. Uh, he gained that information from a, a very, you know, uh, the last week, uh, Krirad have uh, issued a report uh, explaining all the different uh, isotopes and uh, they've got more questions. Uh, Holden Reactor, I'm going to be doing an article on the Krirad um, NGO uh, report on this. Um, as I said, the NRPA we did offer them quite a lot of information. Um, and they've been able to uh, sort of make some assumptions and uh, ask some more questions because of it. The uh, Holden reactor shutdown, uh, he was talking about that, um, the issues around it, and uh, he does pick up on the point that the IFE has uh, needed public money to process all the waste 
from this reactor over the last uh, well the, the last decade. Um, and he's asked for eight million uh, euro from the Norwegian government. Um, he's only got three million. They've only got three million so far. There's a five million shortfall. And as we know, with uh, La Hague and various other uh, processing uh, places, that the <coughs> they're very short on money at the moment. Uh, they're doing cutbacks. The safety issues, uh, as reported uh, at La Hague in a recent article. Okay, so, and La Hague is the French nuclear processing uh, terminal or site. Uh, then he says, uh, why we know almost nothing about this accident, probably of a level four on the uh, international scale INES. And then he's also asking questions that require clarification. Now, the fact is, is that the uh, bloggers, activists, uh, NGOs, uh, from like Bologna, uh, like uh, and and even the uh, regulatory people like NRPA have actually been working together to try and find out as much information to give to you, the public. Um, and I think we're we're getting somewhere now, uh, in my own opinion. Now, uh, Pierre is very harsh on the NRPA. Um, I I would say that um, uh, the NRP have responded. Uh, to NGOs and there, 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 there must be a lot of political pressure on them uh, but even so they are still giving out information so in my books well done in NRPA um, Pierre is very hard with them though um, I, you know, we can probably understand that um, uh, there's a certain lack of trust uh, uh, that develops uh, because of all the secrecy that the you know, people like the IFE uh, and all these other nuclear groups around uh, the world who are involved with this reactor, they, they would not want people to know those problems. And they very much rely on this reactor. Uh, they can't build a new one. It's a bit like the Budapest Medical Isotope Institute, a very old reactor also, has lots of problems. Uh, they do lots of releases, um, which they don't declare. Um, so uh, there was a couple of issues that I wanted to pick up that Kreerad mentioned now. And uh, I'll just get my notes. Uh, anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring you to the evidence of radiation release from Holden nuclear reactor in Norway into Sweden. And that was done on March the 8th. I picked up on the fact that the 17th, 18th, 20th of February 2017, uh, there was missing data points from uh, 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 Norway and uh, a large missing data points from Sweden. Now, uh, and obviously uh, I've showed the Denmark showing the radiation was OK on the 20th. Um, so, uh, but it had lots and lots of missing data on Denmark. I haven't quite worked out why that is the case, unless Norway was doing uh, uh, other releases that hit Denmark before they hit Sweden. Uh, but uh, I haven't been really able to prove that. And um, but but it's possible depending on the winds. So um, I'm just going to quickly swim through this uh, because I wanted to make this little point. I've put, uh, and this is also on europeannewsweekly.wordpress.com, um, and you can see all the missing data points uh, that are around. That's the Swedish ones, that's the Norwegian ones, uh, and I've also at the bottom here, I've put the, uh, just make sure you can see that, yeah, I've put these wind maps for those three days. They're from the Oslo uh, sort of uh, site, and you can see that on the, on, the, um, on the 17th, the wind was going south, and then it turned 180 degrees nearly and then started heading northeast. So it was going up into Sweden and uh, kind of missing Norway. Um, and then at some point it's obviously come up into Norway, as you can see there, and just started uh, doing a little hit in uh, Norway. So Norway cleaned all, you know, and the data all over Sweden, the data all over Norway was deleted. So you can't track where these uh, releases are. Now, some of the other points that I wanted to bring in just very quickly. Um, now, a couple of years ago, and this is just before the NRPA uh, ended up uh, sort of uh, uh, sanctioning the IFE uh, because of problems with the reactor a couple of years ago. Um, and this is when the NRPA took an official uh, uh, sort of close uh, view on the actual whole thing. Um, they said that the there was, there was basically, I measured high levels of lead PG on the UADEC map in Oslo. It was about two to three years ago. Um, and it was, I, I suspected it was from Holden. And what it was, the winds were going north. And I think basically what happened is it take, took uh, lead PB, radioactive lead PB, up into the Oslo fjord. And, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was uh, reasonably high. Now, you can't get those measurements on UADEC anymore, oddly enough. 
Uh, now, what Holden seem to be doing is they seem to be releasing these uh, gases or whatever when uh, they're basically heading south, when the wind is heading south into Sweden. And then the uh, nearest uh, sort of radiation monitor, which measures only gamma, is basically 100 kilometers away. So they have to do all the estimates based on, on uh, sort of uh, uh, peaks that they get on the monitor in Sweden. Uh, and you see that the data is switched off from public viewing. So that's that. Um, the, the good point that the CREAD report made a few days ago was that the larger annual emissions, so basically they've got larger annual emissions limit than the larger NPPs. So the nuclear power plant, a large nuclear power plant, has less annual emissions limit of radioactive gases and particulates than Halden, which is only a very small, uh, low-powered uh, uh, sort of uh, reactor. Now, you know, the locals around there were told that, uh, that the, these, the, there'd be very little in the way of uh, radioactive releases. And in the report we got, it said, well, the, uh, the initial release, which uh, Pierre was claiming is 0.002%, uh, 0.002% of the uh, total release of noble gases and what have you, um, and, and Creerad, I think, was saying was 1.6 times more or something. Uh, but anyway, the bottom line was they were saying there's only 20%. So it's likely that the, the whole release of gases uh, you know, if you looked at them in total, you know, it's a, it's a much bigger amount than just 20% of the annual releases. And the 20% of the annual releases from Holden would probably be, you know, the full releases, you know, the whole annual release from a large nuclear power plant, you know, reactor. So th this is something to bear in mind. Um, now, Nils from Bologna stated that the locals have been sort of, well, he, not his words, this is my words, been conned into believing that there would be um, no releases that could affect them, right? So they were told that, um, and Bologna made the point, did make the point, that, uh, that that promise has obviously been broken and cannot be kept to, you know, considering the uh, situation that, that we saw in October, uh, not mentioning the February one that we're looking at there. Now, <clears throat> The license is still revoked. Now, in the comments section on my last video, people were saying, oh, the license is revoked, this is all fake news, blah, 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 blah. But no, the uh, it's still revoked. And uh, as, as we saw, you know, uh, the NRPA will not renew the license. However, the IFE want the React and all the uh, subsidiary companies that, that want to do uh, testing there, uh, they want that React to back up and running in June. All right, so there's a lot of pressure on the NRPA to, uh, to you know, political pressure uh, to get that up and running. Now they're sticking to their guns, so fair play to the NRPA. Um, they want these particular fundamental flaws in the reactor sorted out, um, uh, but we're still getting no talk about these experimental fuel rods that may or may not have been causing problems. Okay, now, you know, the, Basically, with all these different countries going on, there's obviously security services um, are, are involved and there's a military, possible military applications to what the research is being done there as well. They're the ones with the money, the military, aren't they? Um, so basically, and it's interesting that Russia, the USA, you know, all these countries that in South Korea and all these countries that, uh, uh, you know, might have their, and Japan, they've got their own sort of uh, national defense policies and, and uh, we're supposed to be at war with Russia, but we're working closely with them in Holden. So that's something to bear in mind. Now, you know, the high point that uh, was made about the thorium research, you know, um, may have been the cause of the initial October 2016 damage, you know, and this is something to be bear in mind, you know, to these fuel rods that were removed. Um, and is that some of the problem uh, that was causing the uh, neutron fluxing inside the reactor, which caused the gases and iodine and what have you to, to be in there. So we don't know, but um, yeah, Pierre did make that point and it, it's one of the questions he was asking. 
So, anyway, I think I'm going to stop the video here because I think we've done an update. I'm going to be doing uh, the Creerad report and that shows the plume on October uh, heading south and slightly uh, south and slightly east. So south heading towards the southeast into Sweden um, and uh, we know that the wind changed to a north easterly. So it's kind of pulling it slowly west but, but spreading the, the, these contaminants all over Sweden. So... Uh, that's uh, you know that's uh, what happened in uh, you know that that seems to be what they do they wait for the southerly winds and then in February we was, we saw the winds change going up into into Sweden proper and then maybe coming back into Norway so uh, there's a very close sort of uh, uh, working with the Swedish uh, Danish and um, uh, and other obviously other uh, sort of countries to try and cover up where this uh, radiation comes from and of course uh, with Hungary a very old reactor as well we're seeing the, the the countries local countries doing the same thing there so you know we're, it's it's a it's a big issue um, it's uh, it's been brought up uh, highlighted by Bologna uh, highlighted by Krirad even highlighted by the NRPA as much as they can given the political pressure I think that they're under so um, but anyway the information is getting out there uh, there's french activists there's uh, french activists and bloggers there's uh, you know myself um, uh, there's uh, people in the background like Hervé Courtois who's sharing information and making sure we're all connecting uh, Creerad are connecting with Bologna people are working together as best they can to try and work out what the problems are and to minimize the damage to the public uh, especially the Norwegian public, who 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 are completely unaware of this, uh, apart from the ones that had to click on the blogs and are sort of seeing that there's some issue there. Um, they're, they're, most Norwegians aren't even aware that they have a nuclear reactor in the country. Uh, never mind that uh, Russia is uh, basically <laughs> working with them. All right, and on that note. I don't think there's anything else I'm going to add at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm going to be posting this up on nuclear-news.net. Uh, I'll be doing that tomorrow because our hits go up on the Monday. Um, so I'll be putting that up there. I'll be putting this video up uh, also. I'll be passing that around. If you can share this around so people can understand that there is real problems. There's, there's a, the, the corporations, if you want to call them that, the, the countries, the national countries, are, are trying to uh, help the IFE, the owners of the reactor, to to minimise any negative. Uh, what what would the Japanese say? They would say it's uh, uh, false information or uh, or whatever, uh, or fake news if you're in USA, or um, you know, so post truth if you're in the UK. Uh, but uh, but none of the mainstream are picking up this story. It's a big story. It's an important story, and these people are not sticking to the agreements they did after Fukushima where there, there was a report done uh, the uh, safety implications of, of these reactors um, in Europe and it was done by the IEA so it's applicable to all the, all the reactors around the world are they actually doing what the Japanese did which was just you know put their head in the sand and just stick with the money um, or are they uh, putting safety and security first for the for the local population um, now we've got more stories on why they're doing that and why they feel they're able to do that uh, we have the re-justification for Euratom in Europe where we're trying to challenge the, the uh, health effects that, that are admitted to um, and um, you know that that's going quite well I think Chris Busby did a, a report on that the Irish EPA have got back to us um, and we, we've got uh, some follow-up on that the Swedish uh, um, uh, SSM have finally got back to Chris uh, when, he, when they realized that there's a, a lot of discussion about this um, so there's a lot of pressure from various sources to try and get the nuclear industry to be transparent instead of opaque right to be transparent as the Fukushima report stated the IAE actually drafted this report um, it was just a PR exercise or was it a real attempt at making nuclear reactors safe whether they be research reactors or nuclear power plants or whether they're being uh, their, their nuclear sites where they're doing reprocessing and the stuff that's going on in La Hague at the moment in France is is scary they've cut back the work personnel you know um, you know I'm not anti nuke in the terms I want pro nuke people working in, in La Hague 
following safety protocols to clean up the waste that's left over. And if we don't get to grips with that, even if they get rid of all the reactors tomorrow, we're still left with a very, with very dodgy companies uh, trying to clean up the waste using the minimum personnel and uh, doing it for the uh, financial benefit of companies and not the safety of the public at large. I think I, I think I'll just leave the uh, that comment as a, as a very important issue, uh, which overreaches all the technical aspects of this. But uh, we'll leave it there. Um, thank you for.